All right, hello everyone. My name is Shep. Welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we're going to be playing against Mr. Zeg25. I've never played against him before, but he is darkest rank, and he's running quite an interesting team right here. So it looks like a defensive um, flagellant stress team. So kind of what I was expecting to play against actually when I um, when I was designing this team. So it's not something completely new, but I'm running a leopard team with the mark setup. So normally what you would see. That's that's that. But normally, what you would see is instead of a bounty hunter, we would instead have a, a jester to buff up that uh, accuracy of the leper. But instead, we're gonna have some mark synergy, and we're gonna see what we can do with it. So immediately, he gets to go first, and he goes for a slam on my leper, which had a 60% chance of pushing us. Now, of course. Uh, since you don't have the battle ballad from the leper, I decided not to bring the exotic snuff on him, so I don't have that 90% move resist, and so I just got pushed all the way to the back, which really isn't a good feeling. But it's something we're gonna have to it's something we're gonna have to deal with right here. So the thing is, I could go for a mark right now. If I do that, he's probably gonna go reclaim and he goes first next round, but I feel like I can still get a death on that abomination regardless. Um yeah, I'm probably... Actually, I could just move forward with the Leper first. I feel like this is fine. Yeah, let's just move forward with the Leper and uh, let's call it an action, <laughs> just to put it that way. I want to see if maybe he goes for a, a punish with the Flatrot, you know, if he uh, acts out of turn, essentially, and uh, does uh, some kind of mistake here. We're gonna try punishing him, essentially. He's gonna drop a Panic Darts. No crit, uh, fortunately. I would really not enjoy a crit on my Leper right now, but... That is fine, that is fine. Okay, finish him probably does like 10 to 20 damage, so yeah, that really isn't all that much. And the sniper shot is quite likely to just get the death, well, you know, potentially likely. It's not quite likely, but uh, it has a really decent chance of uh, just doing enough damage. Yeah, he's gonna go for that reclaim now, kind of expectable. And now we're just gonna drop the sniper shot. And yeah, we do get the crit, so that's quite good for us. It's a 44% crit chance, you know, since we have that piercing quarrel and the tiller. So that abomination is gonna be down to zero, and now he can click for that regen. Regen's for 12. I don't I think that's gonna save him, but that's still surprising how much he actually healed for. Um he does have he does actually have um, a lot of dodge. I mean a lot of stun resistance with that mana arms. So instead of going for a sniper shot right now and then failing to get the 50 50 stun on that mana arms with my crusader, I'm instead gonna go for a chop. And now, if he decides to guard, I just have sniper shot and I kill the abomination anyway. He's he's not gonna go for it, he's just gonna drop the immediate bellow. Okay, okay, good to see, I, I guess. Good to see. And in response to that, okay, what should we go for here? We definitely want to use. Actually, we could keep the, the Bounty Hunter turn to do something else. Yeah, we do. We could get the kill with the Arbalist, but I feel like getting the kill with the Bounty Hunter is probably just better here, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get the kill with this Bounty Hunter. Let's uh, finish that Abomination. So, we're gonna have a pretty hard time just uh, actually getting to that Crave Robber, because that's kind of not how the match has been going so far. We have gotten a kill, which is good. But um, this is going to be kind of a rough situation because we are getting closer to afflictions and uh, it looks like we're still pretty far away, but trust me, we're not as far as, as you think we are. Okay, there's only two Bellow debuffs so far. I don't feel like clearing that. I don't feel like that would be a worthwhile play using the Flare to, to clear those debuffs. So instead, I'm just going to drop a Stunning Blow and then I'm going to I'm gonna potentially use the Arbalist's damage from going last. Unfortunately, Snuff is actually working for the enemy flagellon, so we failed to get that 55% uh, stun chance. Quite sad, honestly. Quite, quite sad. Okay. He's uh, sharing the damage around a little bit, which I can definitely see as a good idea, because my Leper is dropping down to zero already. He's getting closer to Affliction now, and he's focusing some damage on my Arbalist. Thing is, if, he drops, if this flagellon drops too low on HP, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time... You know, I'm gonna have a hard time actually killing the other characters because then he's gonna drop a redeem, right? Okay, I have to choose who I want to sniper shot. I'm gonna go for a sniper shot on this man at arms. Unfortunately, we only roll for 10. It's really not uh, not that big of a deal uh, to my opponent here. Also, his damage debuffs are, are really helping him out. That's gonna be a panic dart, that's gonna be an affliction. Yeah, I didn't even need a crit, honestly. He would have dealt enough stress either way. But that's gonna be my armless afflicted. We go selfish, which is minus damage. I think it's minus 10% damage, right? 
Yeah, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It could have been a lot, a lot worse. Yeah, a whole lot worse. I'm gonna drop another stun. Hopefully it works this time. It's a 55% chance. We do have both stun trinkets. Wow, it fails again. Yeah, that really sucks because usually you don't see snuff um, work all that all that much. So I'm kind of sad that it is that it is actually working for my opponent here. He's gonna drop another bellow. He might be making a, a very big mistake right here. Yeah, he just made the mistake of his life. It's gonna cost him the match. And why is that gonna be? He doesn't know it yet. He doesn't know it yet, but he just lost the match. And uh, why is that, Shep? Fuck! Okay, he hasn't lost the match because that happened. Because we moved forward with the Arbalist. Okay, that is that is really, really bad. Selfish moving forward. I don't even understand how that makes sense. But yeah, what's gonna happen is he's gonna drop to 15 HP and he would be unable to survive the chop because chop definitely does 15 damage. Just look at those rolls. And then the finish him would kill him immediately. Immediately. However, because my Arbalist for some reason decided to move forward, I'm not going to have a... Uh... Oh my god. Okay, so, that's two turns being afflicted, and that's two act-outs. You know, two act-outs from two turns being afflicted, you know. Just to put this into perspective, just so uh, we're totally clear here how, how this match is turning out so far. I'm thinking of dropping a Caltrops to start doing some damage. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to go for at this point. At this point, honestly, because that uh, that fledge one should be dead, but you know, act outs are act outs, and I guess he is playing the stress team, so I suppose those happen, right? I suppose those happen. Now he has the chance of going uh, for the heals already, and he has his card up again, so for him, going Bella was a horrible mistake, but unfortunately, he just wasn't punished for it. Okay, that's gonna do enough blight to actually drop me down to zero once I decide to act. Okay. Okay, okay, that's kind of terrifying, because that's my Arbalist dead to another Panic Dart, so that's that's really not too good. That really isn't too good. I need to clutch out a kill on this Flagellant. No matter what happens, he needs to die. Um, so that being said, I'm probably going to go for a Bolo here, because I'm, I'm going to have to Bolo no matter what. Yeah, I am going to have to Bolo here. So I'm just going to drop that. He's probably going to go for a heal on himself or something. I mean, the good thing about the Act Out Revenge is now that even if he heals, I'm probably still going to do enough damage. And even if I drop to this store, I'm still doing a lot of damage. He goes for that Defender as expected. And um, now we get to go for a Stunning Blow. So we failed 255s. So let's see if we get to 50-50 on that Man at Arms. Unfortunately, we don't. I, I don't know what's up today with this Crusader, but it's been four actions. He's failed all three of those stuns, and now we are essentially gonna lose the match unless we get a, a crit chop on that Man at Arms right now. That's that's our only chance of actually retaking control here, because if that doesn't happen, <laughs> yeah, we get a dodge. Come on, we get a dodge on the Man at Arms with one dodge. Are you serious? How does that how does that even happen? I do not compute. I'm gonna have to go for a pull on that grave We're gonna have to bait him into going Shadow Fade, even though it's totally unnecessary and he can just get a kill. But yeah, this is not how the Butcher Circus should be. Because I first he managed to go first, he got the 60% push on my leper, which was totally horrible, and now he's just managing to resist stun after stun. Three times in a row to to be exact. So yeah, this is uh, this is just terrible. Yeah, this is absolutely terrible. My only chance of winning is still to kill that flagellant, and then next round potentially get a stun on the grave robber. We're gonna have to go for another 50-50 stun, and again, 55, 55, 50, 50, and we are just failing these stuns like no tomorrow. And I feel like at this point it's gonna be impossible to win this match. Because we just failed that stun, he's gonna go for a punish, he doesn't even have to go for a heal. Uh, well, we do still have a winning chance. I mean, that's the good thing about this team. It has a lot of chances to make things work, but they aren't endless. Our next chance is to go for a chop, but on an 18 to 33, we roll for 20 because somehow that's, that's just how we roll. Keep in mind he went first, so that means up around 6 he's gonna go first again, which means that I will be unable to kill that Grave Robber, even though he he just decided to let her stay in position too. Because what's gonna happen now is she's just gonna go Shadow Fade and everything is gonna be exactly as it was. He can just drop a Redeem if he wants, you know, anything of the likes. He can do just about anything. Yeah, but he should definitely go Shadow Fade first if he knows what's good for him. So yeah, there goes the Shadow Fade. And right now, how could we still win this match? Well, that card is going away. Oh, 
eventually, potentially. And uh, I feel like I'm gonna have to go for a self here, uh, self heal here. Honestly, I feel like that's gonna be my my only chance because <laughs> surprisingly, even with all that's gone down, we do still have a winning chance, which is called Sacred Blade. If we just manage to go courageous, I don't see how my opponent would really have a good uh, a good shot at killing my characters all that reliably. So yeah, we're gonna have to hope that that's exactly what happens here. Uh, there is still that card there. Okay, okay, I have an idea. I have an idea, but we need to get two stuns right here. Okay, that's one stun. That's one stun, that's good. And now my Bounty Hunter can potentially do a lot of damage to that flash one. After that happens, he can just go for a guard again. But after he goes for that guard again... 9 to 21! 9 to 21! Okay, it's not the end of the world. After he goes for that guard again, which is definitely what he's going to do right now, I'm going to stun him again, or maybe he does enough damage. Does Hugh do enough damage to a flagellant with 40% protection? Let's see, 13 to 23, that's without the minus 40% damage debuff. With minus 40% damage debuff, it's doing like 9 to 16? I I don't know, 9 to 16, it's like... I, I, oh no, that doesn't make sense, I have to break through the guard anyway. Yeah, I have to stun, well, what am I talking about? I'm just going way too crazy right here, and oh, we got one stun, but it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. If we got that stun right there, we would have had a, a pretty decent shot at actually making this work. He gets a crit 15, jeez. Yeah, it's not enough to kill my um, my leopard though. He is still alive. He is still relatively alive here, fortunately for us. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of healing right now. I am gonna have to go for another, another Solemnity here, unfortunately. We have suffered a heart attack, so that means that right now we're gonna be kind of difficult to stress out again. So that's not too bad. That is definitely not too bad. Now, he does still have a lot of healing with that flash, but if we can get him to be the last character alive, maybe we have a winning shot. Just maybe. You know, eventually we're gonna get the stuns. Eventually. It's gonna take a very long time, mind you, but eventually we might be able to get it. Now, he does have that redeem back up soon, but not yet. Okay. Yeah, this really sucks. This really sucks. That flash one should be dead like three rounds ago, and there's no way we should have lost this match. There's no way we should be losing this match. But does that mean it's lost? Mm, not quite. We're gonna go for finish him on the man arms. We're potentially just gonna get a kill on him, and after that happens, we're gonna try pushing some tempo against that flash one, because if the Grave Robber is the very last character alive, she won't have panic cards to use. She'll only have pick to the face. So I'm gonna have to hope that's... Oh, uh, that's how we're gonna make it work. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that the, the stress reduce is actually working against us right now. Okay, yeah, that's not too good. That is most definitely not too good. Um, because the, the Leper is dead, right? Yeah, the Leper is dead, unless we go for a Rally to the Flame, so... We're gonna have to go for a Rally to the Flame, but he says no. My man, my man, we get the stun this time. Not even with a crit do we get the stun. That is unreal, that is unreal. I mean, Numbing Instance is a good trinket, but it's not this good. It shouldn't help you as much as it is right now. This is just totally outrageous how many stuns he's managing to resist. He's gonna drop a command, okay. Yeah, this, this Leper is dead. This Leper is totally and 100% dead. I'm gonna have to drop a finish him here, right, to just do some damage to that Man Arms. He doesn't even have to go for a heal right now. And since he doesn't have to go for a heal right now, he's just gonna go for a big redeem next round. Yeah, that's just wild. Honestly, I feel like going for that Reclaim there was even a miss. Well, you should have gone for a Reclaim on the, on the Grave Robber and then use redeem on the Man Arms. Like, this is, uh, this is hopeless at this point. Unfortunately, this is totally hopeless. So, he's gonna go for a Panic Darts. That's gonna be... Uh, that's gonna be enough stress to get me afflicted, and do I still have a winning chance? I don't know, the Courageous Crusader could, uh, could do some miracles for us, maybe. Maybe the Courageous Crusader could do some miracles. Uh, Paranoid is minus damage as well, <laughs> to add insult to injury. You know, it was just those two essentially passes at the start that kind of just made this match not work as it should be not work as it should have, which is just very, very saddening to see, honestly. Well, the thing is, even if I go for a finish him right now, he's just gonna heal from dropping to this door, so that would be kind of useless. I'm instead gonna drop a finish him on the Grave Robber and just, uh, just do some damage, potentially. Maybe if he slips up or something like that, I might be able to get a kill. 
That's uh, that's what I'm gonna be betting my cards on. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna drop a redeem on her. All right, interesting, interesting. Uh, he is dazed, right? So he's gonna have to act with the man at arms one way or another. But can I get a kill? Well, I can get a kill by the start of next round. I'll have man at arms if I'm lucky. But I, but I do have to be lucky. Yeah, I do have to be quite lucky. I could also go for a stun on the flash, but then he's just gonna start guarding again. And with the regen, I won't have a chance. So, I mean, maybe. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can get a kill on the flash. No, he's just gonna guard and then I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally useless here. Yeah, I need to get that men at arms out of here. There's no way I get the stun, I know, there's no way I get the stun, but I just I just need to do the damage right now. And by next round we might be able to to get a kill on him. He's gonna go toxin trickery, he's gonna clear that caltrips and also get a lot of dodge. Which we obviously don't appreciate right here. Uh, finish him would actually do a lot of damage. 7 to 17. Yeah, that's the damage rolls we needed before, right? That is the damage rolls we needed before, but those are not the ones that we got. We got freaking 12s on 9 to 21s. Yeah, he's gonna drop the, the next defender. Okay. Oh, he isn't outputting a lot of pressure at this very moment, but now he's gonna go for the punish. He gets a crit for it. He, re he gets a bleed on my Crusader. Oh, do we get a virtue though? We get Stalwart. That's not the best virtue, that's giving us protection, which is kind of useless here, and since he already got the punish crit through with the bleed, you know, a 50-50 chance of getting that bleed, then uh, this gets even more hopeless, but we, we never surrender, we never surrender, that's the rule. Okay, we are gonna drop a stun now. You know, being virtuous doesn't increase our stun chance, unfortunately. I would I would love for that to be the case, but it, it just doesn't. If we count the amount of stuns, I, get, I think in terms of, like, I went for maybe... What turn is it, actually? It's turn 11. I've gone for, I don't know, like, 10 stuns total, and I think I got two. And all of them were above 50-50. Yeah, it was either 50-50 or 55. That, that's just outrageous. That is totally outrageous. That's one Bellow debuff being applied as well. Uh, I could pull that Shadow Fade so he doesn't go Panic Doors, but it's gonna hurt anyway. I'm just gonna do a finish him here for 2 damage. Yeah, this is so hopeless. This is so hopeless. He's gonna drop a Panic Darts on my Bounty Hunter. A little bit of stress being applied. I mean, when I say a little bit, I mean he's pretty much dead. Another Panic Darts and he dies. But yeah, he's gonna drop her a claim now. He doesn't even have to have to go for a heal. Well, eleventh time is the charm. Maybe we go for a stun. Hey, we get the stun. But guess what? He's back to exsanguinate. Oh, he could miss. He could miss. Could the snuff come back to bite him in the ass? Come on, come on, snuff. Come on, snuff. Oh, that's just sad. And he gets a crit for it. I don't want to play this game anymore. Look, let's look at the accuracy, right? He had an 86% hit chance, which means, uh, which means, you know, 86 accuracy and minus five dodge. That means he had an 81% hit chance. Remember when my leper failed a 90 to hit on a one dodge man at arms? Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? That was really fun, if you ask me. Yeah, there's no way I do enough damage that flash. And well, uh, he's gonna regen anyway. He is gonna regen anyway, but. He only regens for 4 HP, so unless he kills my bounty hunter right now, I might be able to sneak in a kill on that man at arms, but there's no way I win this match with uh, two exsanguinates remaining and the panic darts available. But I still want to get a kill on that uh, on that man at arms potentially, if, if I can make it work. Because yeah, there's... N I mean, the star is just aligned for Zek 25 here. There is no way in hell we should have lost that this match, but unfortunately... Unfortunately, we did. We're gonna go for a stun. Yeah, he's even gonna regen it. There's, there's nothing we can do here. So, GG, Zeg, you, you got the, uh, you got the RNGs. He got the justice today. There is no justice in this role. There is no justice for Shep. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this very unfortunate match, and let's go straight into the second one. All right, so look, let's get straight into match number two. We are playing in someone of the darkest rank. And, wow, this is quite a different setup. This is a very different approach to, to the team we saw just before this. Okay, okay. I like what I'm seeing. It's definitely also a stress team, you know, with the flagel, but he doesn't have content of absolution. He instead has a very aggressive setup. Okay, okay. It looks interesting to say the least. Um, there's a few things I definitely want to do 
one of them is to potentially just pull that Houndmaster. I feel like that would be a good idea for us. Even though it looks a little bit suspicious, like why would you pull the Houndmaster forward? Can't he just Hound Terry from everywhere? Well, yes, but now if my opponent decides to transform and go for the slam, uh, that means that the flash wand is going to be put out of position. And considering the kind of flash wand this, uh, this is, he probably doesn't want to see that happen. Okay, um... Alright, he decides to go for a beast pile, which means I can't really go for... Uh, which means I can't really go for, you know, kind of a caltrops or anything of the likes, uh, because this, um, this flange is still here in position too. So I'm just gonna decide to stun him before he gets that Reign of Sorrows off. I feel like this is a good idea for us. So we're just gonna apply that stun and we're gonna go from there. We're probably gonna go for a revenge, because I don't feel like I have that good of a hit chance right now. He gets two crits with that Houndmaster, with a 7% crit chance. Ooh. Okay, looks like we're gonna have um, maybe a repeat of, of the last match, it would seem. Yeah, I'd chop uh, the hit chance right now is horrible. We're just gonna drop a revenge that's gonna buff up our accuracy by 15. Stacking that with Eagle Eye Talisman, the leper's accuracy problems kind of relatively go away. Of course, that's one of the other reasons I can't use snuff. I mean, not only would I not have enough damage, I would lose accuracy for it. And yeah, losing accuracy is just, uh, it's really sad. We get a crit sniper shot here, 26% crit chance. It rolls for 29 because we're the last character. And uh, now you can just go for a heal with that uh, Vestal, which is, you know, it's understandable. He's gonna go for that uh, for that heal, and he doesn't actually have the capabilities to drop a regen. I mean, to heal himself right now. So if he doesn't use any of those two actions, uh, if he uses any of those two actions, then then I could go for a potential death blow. My chance of stunning him right now is uh, really really poor, uh, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. It's gonna be a 35, and why am I gonna go for it? I feel like he's gonna um, try to immediately go for an exsanguinate. I feel like he's that kind of player. That's why we're gonna go for a stun here. Yeah, he, he doesn't even go for an exsanguinate. He's just gonna drop a rain of sorrows. So you have to believe that right now, unless he gets a, a crit heal with the Vessels of Divine Grace, that is most likely a dead flagellant. We're just gonna drop a, a sniper shot on him, that's gonna drop him down to zero, and then even if he decides to go for a heal with that um, with that Vestal, the Leper undoubtedly does more than enough. I mean, this is a flagellant that doesn't even have Contour of Absolution, look at my damage rolls. 21 to 39, I can probably even justify going Q at this point. Uh, let's see, how much damage does Q do? 13 to 24, we're just gonna roll for it. We get a crit 31, wow, that's the that's the kind of damage we wanted to see last match. Unfortunately, we didn't get it, but not all is lost. Uh, he might go Guard Dog here, actually. Yeah, he does go Guard Dog, but I can drop a Caltrops and uh, it can potentially still get the death blow. I will have to say, it's gonna be a 45, but that's gonna be a death blow. I'm gonna need to repass for it, but... There is justice in this world, it would seem. There is justice in this world. That's going to be a heal on all the other characters. But that's bleed applied. That's me having a character advantage with a, with a stun character. That's an abomination with no transformation, just sitting in position 3. Keep in mind he has a Vestal for the end of the match. And uh, yeah, we all know how Vestals do at the end of the match. <laughs> Not too well, to put it lightly. Yeah, to put it lightly. Uh, we're gonna drop another stun on the Hound Master. I feel like this is gonna be our play. We kind of want to exhaust his actions and um, potentially get a kill on that doggy as quickly as possible. Okay, he decides to drop that. Um, Alright, I guess in response to that, I'm gonna go for, for a, a cure bandage here on this bounty hunter because I don't want him to drop to death store just yet. So I really don't want that to happen. Of course, Beast Pile is applying a lot of DOT to my Crusader, and, you know, he's very weak to Blights, and it's also applying a lot of stress, especially with double crits like that. Yeah, keep in mind, no crit chance. His crit chance is like, what, 9? Uh, 9, maybe... Yeah, it's 12 because of the Beast Pile, right? It, uh, it goes up a little bit, so it goes up to like 12 with that Beast Pile. And he just got two crits with that. He also got crits with the Hound's Harry, but I digress. We're, we're not here to argue about crits, we're here to get kills. Okay, um, the play here is definitely going to be to pull that vessel. I probably should have done that before, but I was kind of a bit too focused on killing that Hound Monster. But yeah, we're going to pull that vessel, we're going to put the Abomination in uh, in position 4. 
And uh, we're just gonna go from there. He's gonna go for a Dazzling Light that's quite likely to get the stun, actually. Yeah, he does get it, but it's not like it's gonna make a difference. Now I get to drop a hue, and this is gonna hurt. I Look away, please. Uh, 23, 24. Yeah, that, those are some nice damage rolls, I'm not gonna lie. Those are some very nice damage rolls. And he just surrenders, so let's go and keep pushing forward into a third match. Hopefully where the RNG stabilizes a little bit. I'm, I'm not liking how this is going. So yeah, let's just keep moving. Right, let's go straight into a match number three. Once again against Mr. D. He said he made a new team. And uh, it looks like we're going to play against another Flashbond. Everyone's playing the Flashbond nowadays. I mean, there's a pretty good reason for it. It's the fact that the Flashbond is broken. Uh, but yeah, we we do have the tools to deal with it. Typically, if you'd have the Helicomp, you'd have a Chester's Finale to deal with it. But when you have a Leper, that means you can just get one-shots, essentially, after he heals. And that's how you try to win the match. However, the, the only reason we didn't win the first match is because since that Manorum just kept guarding him, he kept failing the stuns, that means we couldn't punish him after he went for those big boy heals. So, yeah, that's why we had a pretty hard time. In this specific situation, we don't have any AoE, aside from Caltrips, so his duelist advance is not going to be as scary as it could be. So, yeah, out of the balloon, that's already pretty good for us. That's already a pretty nice situation. Okay, that anti is going to be in position 4. Um, if she goes regen, that's kind of annoying on me, honestly. I could go for a come hither. Oh, yeah, I've seen people do this a lot. Um, I feel like it's good because I have a leper for damage output. Thing is, we're going to go for a come hither, and uh, then he's just going to go take cover, and then by the start of the next round, he's going to use regen. And so we basically both waste an action here, but I waste a non-infinite action. I mean, I mean, I waste an infinite action, he wastes an action that isn't infinite, so he's not going to have to take cover for the end of the match, which I guess it's good. It's not really what you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on the right now and not in and not like the 20 turns, because most matches are won and lost during the first five turns, but I guess getting that take cover gone is still very important. I mean, there's exceptions, right? You don't want to waste your final heals. Uh, but take covers are not something that I would value as much, so don't think you're immediately winning because you're wasting uh, the Antiquarian's take covers when he doesn't actually care all that much about him. He went for the command first. I, I'm i not too sure about that play. That means he wants to go Reign of Sorrows because he needs that accuracy to hit me, right? Yeah, I guess that's why he went for that play. Um, I have an idea, and it's a little silly. It's not silly at all, it's the best idea. I'm gonna go for a stun on that man arms, that's gonna be his action gone. Why do I not want to go for a stun on the flagellant? He's about to hit you for a true rock load of damage with Arena of Sorrows. Guess what? I don't care. Because now, I get to stun him for round 2, and for the entirety of round 2, and he won't have a guard for the entirety of round 2. And what that's gonna mean essentially is... Good damage roll, by the way. What that's gonna mean essentially is, after we get a good chop damage roll on that flange with our 19 to 35 damage he's gonna have a horrible time because now we are gonna go for a stun on that flange we're gonna have an 85 percent chance of getting it so i'm hoping that we do get it and after that it's all downhill for him he definitely has to go reign of sorrows i mean he definitely has to go regen immediately because if he doesn't he's having a really bad time he might go for the vendetta first actually i feel like he wants to go vendetta first I don't care about your higher man, man. I, I really don't care about your higher man. I have another idea, which is just going for a sniper shot. It's going to do 10 to 17. Um, it is an idea. It is an idea. It probably doesn't even do enough damage to justify me going for it. So, no, I'm not going to go for it. Yeah, I'm just going to drop a... Damn, I actually kind of want to go for it, because I'm, I'm scared the leper won't do enough damage. And he gets to go first next round anyway. But yeah, I'm gonna go for a stun on that Flagellant, we get a min roll, that's really bad, that's really bad. That means Flagellant might actually probably survive here, unless we get a chop crit. Uh, this is not looking as perfect as it could be. He's definitely gonna drop the Rejuvenating Vapors now, I'm gonna have to believe. Yeah, most likely, I mean, 99% chance that he does that right here, though he would be a fool not to do it. Uh, if he doesn't, I'm, I'm, I might just drop a chop on that Man at Arms and just get a kill. Yeah, just get the immediate kill. Uh, yeah, that's a mistake. Th that's a mistake. He's not gonna have enough time to save at, um, the men arms now. I'm just gonna drop a chop and that's gonna be him gone. 
even though I would like a kill on the flash wound right now, I don't mind taking the man at arms life at this point. I, I really don't mind. He's gonna drop the regen anyway and we're gonna be more than happy about the situation. Yeah, more than happy really, more than happy. He's gonna drop the regen, right? There's nothing to think about, man. <laughs> There's nothing to think about. Either you pass the... No, actually, there could be something to think about. He could pass the turn right now. Or he could just drop a festering papers. Ha, ah, interesting. Interesting stuff. He does go first next round, so I definitely have to go for a kill. Um, I could I could be thinking of going for a come hither and a shot on the Antiquarian, and I would go for that if I went first. But I'm not going to do it since I didn't go first. So I'm just going to drop this, uh, this finish him, and then I'm going to go for a sniper shot on the Antiquarian, just do some decent damage potentially. 14, that's not too bad, considering he has dodge and I could have even missed, so I, I'm definitely not going to complain about rolling for that 14. Okay, yeah, that's kind of the, the downside of using shield spike, because typically if you have shield spike, you're not going to have uh, as much prot as you want to have with that mana arms. Of course, the 10% base prot is still going to do a pretty good job against an Arbals that has stabilizing tiller and snuff, but against an Arbals with piercing quarrel, my man, that's, that's just not going to cut it. Okay, he's gonna roll for seven. Is that gonna do enough damage? No, it's not enough just yet. Um, I can't stun him. I can't stun him immediately, at least. Uh, he has a lot of dodge right there. I want to keep my finishing action, that's for sure. Hmm, I can't stun him immediately. Okay. Okay, let's see. Well, the play I'm gonna have to go for is kind of a silly one. Honestly, it's... No, it's not that silly. I'm gonna go for a heal on the bounty hunter because I don't want him to die to grape shot. And the thing is, my frontline is pretty tanky, so Grape Shot's gonna take a pretty long time until it actually gets some kills going. And uh, if I keep my Bounty Hunter alive, I keep my finishing character alive, so this is just fine. I mean, the alternative for that would be to go for a Sniper Shot, which could potentially just miss. So I, I'm more than happy to, to go for this play. Uh, he's gonna go for a an action with an Antiquarian. If he doesn't go regen right now, he's he's misplaying. Okay, protect me. Okay, that's also an idea that you can go for. All right. How much knowledge does the Highman have? Well, he has a decent amount, if you ask me. He does have a decent amount. Okay. Um, I could go for a stun here, and that flash one might just be dead, honestly. Yeah, if I get the 35% stun, then he's definitely dead. But even with the big damage roll... Oh, we get the stun. Okay, that's that's really good. That's really good. Now we get to go for a chop. It's probably going to do enough damage. And after that, it's just going to be a finish him. 35! Wow, that, that, that hurts. I mean, the thing is, even if we didn't get the stun, all he could go for is a Reign of Sorrows. And yeah, Reign of Sorrows is going to do a lot of damage to my characters, but it's not going to kill him. It's not going to kill him immediately. It's not going to save him. And that's just going to be a really hard time for, for my opponent here. So the kind of team idea that he has here is definitely an anti-stress idea. It's way too anti-stress. He has two reposts when he doesn't need two reposts. And he has uh, two characters that do relatively well against, um, against stress teams. I mean... Is exceptionally well against stress teams, but also Tears of the Lost for that virtue chance. And that might have um, might have just been his mistake to go way too hard on, on the anti-stress, but not all is won. Not all is lost for him, and not all is won for me, because that's still an anti is sitting there in the back, and so we all know how anti can going to be annoying little pricks. I'm going to go for a heal here, and after that I'm most likely just gonna go for actually a pull on that higher man and then just stun him and just do enough damage and all that. You know, just go go for the usuals and then it's gonna be a 4v1 and as good as the Antiquarian is in these kind of matchups, she's she's gonna have a bad time. <laughs> she's gonna have a bad time. I don't have any re reach to position 4, I don't have purge because I feel like Hugh is more important. Hugh gives me the, the versatility that purge just doesn't so that's why I don't really like to run it. Uh, if I get a crit right now, I might just be able to do enough damage, and then my stun might uh, might actually get a death blow. But unfortunately, that's not what goes down here. We do get a we do get a miss though. We do get a miss. That is the first miss of the match. Surprisingly, even though he had monkeys fall on the mana arms. Very interesting setup. Not gonna lie, quite an interesting setup. But we have been going for very high accuracy chance abilities. He's gonna drop a point blank shot. Really. He's gonna drop a point blank shot into a sniper shot. <laughs> oh, that is uh, that is an interesting play. I'm not gonna lie, that is a very interesting play. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna go for for the sniper shot then. Don't mind if I do. It's an 85% hit chance. That is a that is a big overkill, if you ask me. That is a huge overkill on the hammer man. 
that's going to be him dropping down to zero. It's going to be a pestering vapors. He gets a crit on the wrong character, but it still does enough stress. 19. Oh, my man. Uh, that's enough stress to get my bounty hunter afflicted. So that's this is when things can actually get a little bit tricky here. Because with the bounty hunter afflicted irrational, that means he might just go for any sort of silly act out. Let's see if he does that. Irrational, just a bit of stress. Okay, I guess it could have been worse. 78% chance to hit. Fortunately, we get it. Don't expect to get all those. Uh, a lot of the times, it, uh, you don't get those. A lot of the times, you don't get those 78% chances. Uh, it was against the Jester. I mean, it was against the Harman right now, but that's the kind of chances you have against the Jester. Even if you have uh, something like a battle ballot. This is just overall circus advice. Sometimes you have a really hard time finishing off Jesters because they're 40 dodge, and it's absolutely outrageous, actually. We're just going to go for a chop there. Uh, the corpses are going to go away eventually, and then we're going to um, hopefully be able to perma stun that anti burn because, yeah, anti burn is insane with the festering vapors, right? It's it's doing a lot to my team here, but we just killed his team way too fast for it to be enough, I'd say. If he had something like an abomination transforming... Oh, we got stalwart. Oh, I'm sorry to see that. It's two stalwarts today, by the way. That is two stalwarts in one day. Uh, I could actually miss my come hither, I believe, so... Instead of missing my come hither, I'm gonna go for a bandage on the bounty hunter just so he gets his accuracy back. Then I'm gonna go for a pull, and after the pull, it's gonna be stun, and yeah, we all know where it goes from there. We all know where it goes from there. It's gonna be stun, 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 and she's gonna have a horrible time. I might just go for a chop anyway if my hit chance is okay. That's not okay, man. That is not okay. That is not an okay hit chance. Yeah, we're just gonna heal instead, and now we go for a stunning blow. Uh, heals 10 stress, that's actually pretty good. Uh, but we don't actually get that hit, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't get that hit. But now she's in position 2, which is not where she likes to be. He's gonna go for that take cover, actually. Huh. I could... I can flare that away, you know. I can flare that away, just go for another pull and go for another stun. My hit chance is still gonna be bad. And uh, I guess that's a good hit chance, if you ask me. I don't even have to go for a pull, honestly. I can just go for a, a hue right here. And uh, with that hue, I, after that I'm going to go for a stun and then I finish him and something of the likes and yeah. Antiquarian, really good character, but if she had a monkey spawn on top and if she had an abomination transforming, that would be a pretty good counter against what I have here. But considering that he has tears to the lost, I mean, he just went all out with the anti-stress. I mean, in all recent matches, I think every single team I played was stressed, so he, he probably got a little bit... Um, uh, got a little bit too too much PTSD from my my Hound Harry just getting all those crits and thought, okay, that's enough. I'm done with your Hound Harry ship. I am totally done. Look at that crit 38. I mean, not even a crit. Yeah, rolled for 38 with a Death Star debuff. By the way, that is wild. That is totally wild. Uh, yeah, we go for the heal on the. Um, on the bounty hunter here for sure, so you get the, that extra accuracy. Yeah, then that's the idea. We get that extra accuracy there, it's it's the best choice we have. I'm gonna go for a stunning blow, not that likely to hit, 5% chance to kill. And now the bounty hunter should get it, but it's not a 100% chance. Yeah, but we're just gonna go for it. 81 and 80, GG Mr. D. And I guess let's move forward into match number 4. And here we go, match number 5, and wow, what is this wildness? Okay, looks like we're going to be facing a Stress Lemper. Ah, ah, interesting team, interesting team that my opponent has here. Man of Arms with Protector Sky to Eerie wow, okay. I like what I'm seeing, there's definitely going to be a stun coming in from that... Uh, from that Crusader, so I'm already not liking what I'm seeing. I mean, I like it, but I also don't like it because it's it's strong and it's going to give me a hard time. I'm going to go for kind of a weird move. It's not what you were expecting, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go for a pull on that Man Arms because that's going to stop two things. But <laughs> he just tells, he just sends me a message. Oh no! Yeah, first the Leper can't intimidate from position two because, you know, as if it wasn't a bad enough ability already. <laughs> Second, he can't go Bulwark, he can't go Zealous. Third, if he goes Holy Lance, Leper goes position 3. Honestly, the best play for him would have been to just move back with uh, Man at Arms, just bite the bullet, and, uh, and just do that, but he decides not to go for it, which is kind of interesting. But, yeah, not, not too big of a deal. Okay, um... 
I'm gonna go for a stun. Wow, my hit chances. Uh, let's go for a stun here on the Commander Arms. It's gonna be a 70% chance of getting it. And so it begins! The stuns are gonna start failing. Again and again and again and again. Uh, let's not start panicking that all that quick. That's gonna be a weakening curse. He actually doesn't have the pull on that occultist and he's going for weakening curses. My man, I am somewhat surprised. Is this supposed to be a debuff team against an Arbalist? Yeah, that's not too good of an idea. I mean, if you run a cultist, if you're on stress a cultist, what you should do is bring the Flashbound Grimoire and just start spamming Abyssal Artillery. And if you get pulled to position 2, you just start spamming. Uh, you just start spamming the Eldritch Pull and you have a pretty good time that way. Can I even click the Occultist character to show the ability? No, I don't think I can, unfortunately. That's already two debuffs on me. That's my damage kind of in the gutter, honestly. But is that worth going for a the immediate flare? No, definitely not. Definitely not. We get a crit 23 on that leper. He doesn't have any protection yet. I mean, the 10% protection he has is non-existent because of my piercing quarrel, so I'm quite happy with this outcome. Of course, you can only use Bullock from positions 1 and 2, so yeah, oh, things aren't looking too good for my opponent until that happened. Yeah, that is, that is not what you like to see. We're definitely going to stun him here. We don't want him to get his Bullock off. Because the protection he has right now, I can ignore with my Arbalist. But if he gets a Bullock, it's not going to be quite like that. Especially stacking that with Bellows. My Arbalist is essentially going to start doing zero damage. Same thing with the Leper. Because Arbalist can already ignore protection. The Leper doesn't have a trinket that lets him do that. So if those debuffs start coming in, my man, it's not good for, for someone like the Leper. It really isn't good. Uh, I'm just going to drop a chop here, honestly. 16 to 29 damage. Uh, it's way less on that Crusader. 16 to 29. 16 to 29 is good. We get a roll for 28. Okay, that's nice. I don't think I've seen Leper crit once this entire video. And it's been five matches. Hopefully this one is the one. Keep in mind that Revenge gives him 11% crit. And I have Gladiator's Mask, which is also giving him 3% crit. Uh, yeah, if the circus just doesn't want to give you crits, you don't get crits, I suppose. No, the Arbals has been getting some crits, so uh, I might be I might be complaining a little too much here. Oh, that's a lot of damage debuffs. I'm thinking of going for that Bellow soon. Yeah, I am thinking of going for, I mean, for that Flare soon. But first I'm going to drop a Caltrops. That's just going to apply a steady flow of DOT to his entire team. And I feel like I don't particularly have to go for a come hither right now. So I'm more than happy to, to do that. Yeah, I'm more than happy to drop a Caltrops and to just start ticking at his team because this match is going to take ages and if the match is going to take ages then a bleed just being constantly applied is definitely going to help me because you can look at the bleed from Caltrops as essentially adding an extra 2 damage onto your stun. So my Crusader instead of doing like 8 damage with a stun, it's going to be doing 10 because once, once they pass their action, instead of um, receiving... 8 damage from the stun, they will be receiving 10 because of the caltrips on top. So if you want to look at it like that, then be my guess, because I think that's a pretty good way of looking at it. I'm definitely going to go for the flare now. Uh, I mean, the Arbalist is totally screwed in terms of damage. I mean, 8 to 14, that can crit for 19, which is a good amount, but it can also just do 9. Yeah, we're going to flare this as much as I don't want to do it, because honestly, my damage is, really is in the gutter. It's with this Arbalist, so I'm just gonna fire those debuffs away. Okay, the Leper is back in position 2, which means I can go for a stun on him, but do I want to go for a stun on him? Not particularly. I would rather maybe go for a chop immediately, or maybe actually a, a sniper shot. How much damage would I do? Actually, a good amount, because he has revenge, right? So. 13 to 23, we roll for 18, that's not too bad. If he doesn't go for a heal, he's going to be eating a stunning blow to the face, most likely. Yeah, keep in mind that he can't really go Defender at this point in the match, uh, because if he goes for a Defender on the Leper, I just go heal and I, I really don't care about it. Uh, but he does have a lot of healing characters, he has um, both the Occultist with the Weird Reconstruction and the Stygian Embrace, and he also has the Crusader to just use Rally to the Flame. So that's going to be the first Affliction being added onto my team. That's going to be a Masochistic on this Arbalist. Okay, I guess it could have been worse, it could have been Fearful or something like that. Masochistic isn't minus damage, so 
I am not overly concerned about that. I'm definitely gonna go for a stun here. I feel like this is a play crit. That's an extra 20% stun chance, and we do get it. So we get the 80% stun, and that means that if he wants to save that leper, he's gonna have to go for a heal with one of these two characters. I wonder which character he goes for first. If he goes for the slot machine heal, I'm definitely gonna go with the leper, because it's probably gonna heal a lot. If he goes for a heal with the crusader, I might still go with the leper and just drop a hue. Yeah, I might go with the leper anyway. I'm, I'm probably just gonna go with the leper anyway. Also, do you notice the difference in this fifth match that it's actually going quite well despite the matchup because we finally went first? Going first is such a boon when you have a marked team like this. It's helping us unbelievable amounts. 12 to 22, I'm more than happy to drop a hue here. That's also going to be a little more damage being applied on our man of arms. And even though it wasn't enough to drop him to death store, once he acts, he's going to drop down to zero. So even though he has this team with stress, a lot of protection, a lot of bellow debuffs, I'm still just totally enjoy enjoying myself because since I managed to go first, I, c I was able to control the pace of the match. I'm going to have to disagree with that move. Actually, do I? Do I disagree with that move? Not really, because his Leper is gonna die anyway, because guess what? I went first round one! Finally, I went first round one, so even if he went for a heal, then I would have dropped the finish him, and by the start of next round, I would have dropped another finish him, and I would be in the... I would have the advantage anyway, and I would kill that Leper no matter what. And now, instead of wasting a heal, he managed to go Holy Land, so well played to my opponent here. Uh, does he have a killing chance? He does with that Abyssal Artillery. I can't let him get a kill on my Bounty Hunter because it's my only finishing character. Uh, it is imperative that um, the Bounty Hunter survives. As much as I want to go for a Stunning Ball on the Crusader, if he just decides to go trollolololol and click Abyssal Artillery, you know, just click the noodles and get a lucky 25 death flow, it's, it's all over for me. Well, it's not all over, but I'm gonna have a really hard time actually clutching out kills. Essentially, because if you can't punish your opponents when he drops down to zero, then he's gonna keep stacking that uh, those weird reconstruction heals with the salt machine and also those heals that will rally to the flame. And let me tell you, you are not having a good time. Actually, the occultist is guarded by the men of arms. I kind of missed that. I think that happened like two rounds ago or something. Interesting that you went for that. Um, I'm probably gonna go for a stun here, right? Yeah, that's definitely what we're gonna go for. Uh, a little bit of damage on the Crusader and also removing his action. Keep in mind I'm up a character, so if I'm I'm stunning characters right now, I'm having a wonderful time. Let's see what he goes for. He has to click that Occultist and he has to go for a heal. He has two heals he can do. He can go for a Slot Machine heal and heal a lot, or he can go for a... or he can go for Stygian Embrace, or he can go for a Noodles double crit. I mean, that also works. Sure. I, I guess that's fine. thing is, he's not going to be able to save that mana arms no matter what. Yeah, I'm going to be able to get a kill. I was looking over at his abilities to see if maybe he had a retribution to get a lucky... Uh, a lucky 25% death flow, but he doesn't have any abilities like that. Would you look at that? My Leper finally got a crit! And the amount of damage in output. Half of that Crusader's HP, even though he has 50 prod, even though I have one Bellow debuff. Okay. That's going to be a damage debuff being applied, but even with two damage debuffs, I'm not afflicted, and this is just a death flow. If I was, like, fearful, and I had three bellow debuffs, and he had, like, 65 protection is a lot. But yeah, if I had, like, another bellow on me, that man of arms might have survived, I might have done zero damage to finish him. Okay, fortunately he doesn't get that lucky death flow we were, we were talking about, which means that now, that, that um... That Crusader is actually probably dead here, because we're gonna once again drop another chop. 7 to 13, another crit! Yay, we're getting all the unnecessary crits, don't you just love to see it? 26% crit chance. Finally we're getting some, at least. Yeah, finally we're getting some. Uh, selfish... Okay, yeah, let's drop this finish him, that's gonna be that Crusader gone. Fortunately for us, and after that... Uh, I do want to keep this character alive just to clutch out the match a little bit faster. We're gonna go for a heal on the Bounty Hunter just so he doesn't die, even though there's a lot of horror being applied, I know. And even though my Arbos has uh, two damage debuffs already, she's still doing 7 to 12, which isn't much, but it, it's taking away at that occultist. Yeah, really wish I had Purge here, but honestly Purge feels like a win more card. And the thing about a win more card is that it doesn't let you win more matches, it lets you win situations where you're already winning more. 
So, I mean, I'm already winning this match. Going for a purge here would let me win harder, but I don't need to win harder, I need to win. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm gonna take a bunch of horror from that, I'm gonna go for a pull, do zero damage with it, that's natural, there's 40% protection on that occultist. And I'm gonna misplay and go for the stun first. A chomp would have definitely done enough damage, so I could have potentially just gone in the death blow, but you know, it's fine, who cares at this point. Then we're gonna drop a chomp, and the Arbalist is gonna have a pretty decent shot at just getting that death blow on the occultist. And we're gonna roll for it, and GG Mr. D, that's gonna be another match taken by the sniper team. So, I hope you got a pretty good exposure of what this team can and can't do. I definitely feel like it is a pretty big menace if the RNG isn't uh, isn't totally against it, and um, it's a pretty good alternative to something like the WD, or something like the Hill Comp, though it does have some weaknesses, but it does also have some very clear strengths. So, hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.